now get to a really important concept that's known as the equivalence of norms. And what it essentially says is that if a vector is large in one norm, then it's large in another norm. And if a vector is small in one norm, then it's small in all other norms. All right. So to motivate this, let's go back to this picture that we drew that are the sets where the various norms are equal to one. One norm is equal to one, the two norm is equal to one, and the infinity norm is equal to one. And what we would like to be able to say is, at least for this case where we're working in two-dimensional space with real uh, valued vectors, is it the case that a vector in the, let's say, two norm is always less in length than the same vector in the one norm. And how can we reason through that? Well, we can say if y has a two norm of equal to one, hmm. what do we know then? We know that it exists somewhere on the unit ball for the two norm. Hmm. Then what? Well, let's look at the unit ball for the one norm. This is where the one norm is equal to one. At all points outside, the one norm is greater than one. And for all points, or for all vectors that point to points inside of this, the one norm is less than one. So, this vector y that we chose on the unit ball for the two norm is outside the ball for the one norm. And therefore, we can conclude that the one norm of y is greater than or equal to 1. It could be equal if we had chosen y right there. Okay? Now, let's choose an arbitrary vector. Let's call it z. And let's put it way out here. And let's look at the 2 norm of that vector. Well, it's not the case that it's two norm is equal to one, so we can't apply our reasoning that we've done so far. But what we do know is that we can scale that vector by its length, and then using this right here, bring that inside. And what we have just created is a vector of length one. What does that really mean? What it really means is that we took this vector z and we scaled it down to place it on the unit ball. Okay? Now we have a vector with 2 norm equal to 1. Therefore, we know that this is less than or equal to the 1 norm of the vector z divided by the 2 norm of z. All right. Now, again, applying the fact that the norm is homogeneous, we can cancel both of these on both sides, as long as z was not the zero vector. And we conclude that it's always the case, no matter what vector z you choose, that z is less than or equal to, the two norm of z is less than or equal to the one norm of z. So what does that mean? If a vector is small in the one norm, then it's small in the two norm. 